In this video, I would like to show you some additional tools that can help you modify and adjust your photos. Now these tools can come in handy when finalizing pictures for clients to see or even for your own personal use. So first I definitely need a photo to work on, so I'm going to open the white room photo I used in the last video. Do you remember how to open an existing picture file? <laughs> Go to File, Open, and then use the File Explorer to find where your picture is located. Once you see your picture, just highlight it by clicking on it, and then click Open. You should now see the photo placed in Photoshop just like a canvas to be worked on. Uh, as in all my videos, I am going to show you some basics. You can definitely explore all of these basics much further if you would like to with other resources. Uh, I'm just trying to get you started with some tools that can help you control your photos, manipulate your photos, make them do what you want. So let's get started with the crop tool, one of my favorites. Uh, let's say that we really just want to focus on the chair and the table with the plant on it. We don't necessarily need the lamp or anything else around it. The crop tool is great. Um, it is located right underneath all the selection tools. It kind of looks like a square with uh, some lines coming out of the corners. What's nice about Photoshop is that if you hover your mouse over one of the tools in the toolbar, it's going to show you what that tool does and then they also have a link to learn more about how to use those tools. So definitely explore all those options. So I'm just going to click on the crop tool and you'll notice that around the border of the photo there are these little grips. They're kind of long and rectangular at the corners as well as in the middle of each side of the rectangle. By simply clicking and dragging on those little grips, you can adjust your crop. Oops, so see I moved the border of the picture instead of the actual crop box itself. So I'm just going to do a control Z to undo. And I'm going to instead grab the grip. Make sure you're always grabbing grips. And I'm just going to kind of frame around, and let's get the rug in there a little bit, around the table and chairs and the plant, just like that. So as you can see, Photoshop grays out the area that you're not selecting and it keeps the area that you do want to keep highlighted and selected. Simply by clicking enter, you've cropped your first photo in Photoshop. What happened is the rest of the picture went away, it got deleted. So if you want to keep the integrity of that photo, just hit Control Z and you're back to where you need to be. So again, the crop tool, you just simply click on it and then you adjust it as you feel like you need to. So maybe we want something long and skinny. Hit Enter and there's your cropped photo. Control Z to undo and we're going to keep our photo as uh, perfect as it was when we first opened. The next tool I want to show you is the spot healing tool or the spot healing brush tool which looks like a band-aid and it's located kind of in the top middle of your toolbar. So as the picture is demonstrating it can actually take little spots or areas that you don't want and it'll actually make it look like they're not there. So for instance we have this plant right here. It's kind of in the way. It's a little blurry. It's a little awkward right there. And my goal is to make sure that my cursor, when it becomes a circle, overlaps the shape just a little bit. Now this might be a hair too small. So I'm going to up the ante a little and make it a 46. There we go. That's kind of what you're looking for. A little bit on both sides. And what you're going to do is you're going to click and drag and it shadows where your brush has been and voila, it is gone. So what Photoshop is doing is it's understanding the pixels on both sides of the object that you're trying to heal essentially and it's smart enough to understand how to put those pixels back together once that object is gone. Now if we zoom in, so I'm going to use this magnifying glass down here and I'm going to click 
click and drag down to zoom in nice and big no need to strain your eyes you can see that there's a little bit of an outline and it's a little strange so the next tool I want to show you is the smudge tool which actually looks like a little finger like a hand with a finger like you're gonna smudge a pencil or something like that and up in the options bar you can choose what size you want it to be what hard edges that you want your smudge tool to have there's all kinds of brush um, examples and things that you can set with I don't really use that too awful lot but here's a diff some different kind of brushes that you can play with I just like using the simple uh, soft round I do like to have a little bit of uh, a soft edge to it I'm going to keep it normal but strength is also something that you want to do so let me show you when it's full strength what it does so see I can actually take those pixels and I can really push them around it's seriously like you're putting your finger right on the paper and smudging things around I don't necessarily want it to be that strong so I'm going to undo Oh, that was a little too far so again I can redo if I need to and I'm gonna take this strength and I'm gonna put it at about 40 to 50 somewhere there's 46 now when I come in and I can just kind of smudge it just a little bit and those edges of that little border that was showing kind of go away a little bit so I also like to use the smudging tool to take these little spots and if you just kind of work with them a little bit they actually go away just a little up and down kind of motion little circular motions that can work too so if there's ever anything in my picture that I feel is like maybe a little flaw or something's kind of going on with pixels you can use this to really just smooth it out again what the smudge tool is doing is it's taking the pixels and it's blending the colors together you just have to be careful and again you can always change the size of your brush you can change how strong it is but that is one way that you can work with both the spot healing brush tool as well as the smudge tool you want to try the spot healing brush one more time just to kind of get a feel for it all right so I'm gonna click on the band-aid I'm gonna to try to get rid of this line right here so right now my brush is way too big I just need it to barely go over either side so I'm going to take this and I'm gonna make the size a lot smaller that should be about right and I just click and drag all the way down and that line goes away so same thing here I mean got that little bit right there just click and it goes away if there's any kind of a border or anything like that from where you smudged then go ahead and just use that smudge tool to kind of even it out I guess is the best way to put it all right so that's the spot healing brush tool let's just go on to the regular brush tool so that you can see that and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use control minus to zoom out so that we can see the picture again and the brush tool is like a free-handed drawing tool so wherever your cursor goes the brush will go as well so here I am I have that chosen um, I'm gonna choose a different color for the brush so I do that by coming down here and I double click inside of that first square and that's kinda like the brush fill or the brush ink however you want to look at it so right now I have this spring green kind of color and actually I just want black let's just do straight black so the easiest way to get straight black is to click and drag all the way into this very bottom right hand corner and your goal is to see zero 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 in the RGB now you can also take this and type zero 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 in these fields and you'll have straight black to get straight white you can click and drag all the way up into the very top corner and your goal is to get 255 in R G and B so that's a perfect white perfect black is zero 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 perfect white is 255 in all three categories alright so I want black so I'm going all the way back there we go and I'm gonna click OK so I want to check my brush size and make sure it's a good size and like I said this is a free handing drawing tool so I'm gonna kinda model one of my favorite movies ever <laughs> good old Batman with Michael Keaton you can't go wrong right so now it looks like I graffitied 
on that wall back there. I even went over the lamp, but that's okay. So again, the brush tool is just a free-handed tool that you can choose to do some things with. There are different types of brushes that you can play with, so by clicking this little brush file folder here, you can definitely play with some textures and noises and stuff like this. There's also different types of brushes that you can work with. So here's some wet media brushes, so like Kyle's Impressionist Blender, what does that do? Sometimes you just have to play a little bit. Ooh, look at that. That's fancy. Just play and check out and see what some of these tools do. Special effects brushes sounds kind of fun. Looks like there's some interesting things to play with there. You can play with the softness. You can play with the hardness, the size of the brush. There's so many different things that you can do with brush tools and the different types of brushes that you can draw with. Now I do want to point out that there are more options with the brush tool. So for instance, opacity and flow, they kind of do the same thing. So I don't know if I can really tell you what the difference is between the two, but I always just work with opacity. So if I didn't want this to be as opaque as it is, I just bring down the opacity and you can see how it's much lighter. You can see through it. Um, I can even layer on top of it so that you can get different effects. There you go. So opacity is something that can work with the transparency of whatever it is that you're drawing. Flow does the exact same thing. So you can even try changing the flow and see what it does. So a reminder that all these tools that we're working with, every single one of them are going to have different options up in the option bar. So as soon as you activate a command, you can come up here and see what options do you have for using this tool. So there is the healing brush, here is the regular brush, the crop has different options. They're all going to have extremely different options for you to work with. All right, I'm going to go ahead and undo all of this stuff that I just did. Wow, I made a mess of my picture. La 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 la. All right, we're back to a normal picture. Almost. I almost forgot about. I did such a good job of getting rid of that little leaf that I forgot that it was there. So I'm going to keep going back. And you might see and find <laughs> what happens is that it can only go back so far. So I don't think I'm ever going to be able to get that completely back because my undo has gone back as far as it can go. So you have to be mindful of how far back a step was um, and if you need to undo something try to undo it right away. So we are going to be sans leaf up there in the corner for the rest of this demonstration which is okay because we're almost done. There is something I want to show you that's one of my favorite tools and that's the clone stamping tool which is located underneath the brush. It looks like a stamp that you know like your teacher in grade school would put a big red A on your paper with. Um, and what it does, I'm going to hover, is it paints with pixels from another part of the image. So if like you see the flowers you want to make them look a little bit bigger uh, and better you can basically copy what's going on in the image. So it's really cool. I'm going to pretend to actually, let's see if we can get this carpet to come out a little bit more. So I'm going to use the clone stamping tool. The key to this is not only having the right brush size, but kind of understanding how it works. So the first thing that Photoshop needs to know is like, where do you want to start? By holding the Alt key, A-L-T, on your keyboard, it's right next to your space bar you'll see that your cursor changed to like this little scope. And basically what you're doing is you're taking like a, a snapshot of sorts right there and I'm going to click and I'm going to let go. And as I move my cursor, do you see how it kind of took a snapshot of that carpet? And now I can kind of place it wherever I want to, but all I want to do is just bring it out just a little bit. So I'm actually going to come, um, let's go right about here. I'm going to click and drag and watch what happens. I actually brought that carpet out a little bit, right? But something else happened too. I'm going to un un undo that. And I want you to watch what happens next to the cursor. Do you see that there's a little white plus sign? It's kind of hard to see. But it's basically wherever that white plus sign is, is what it's painting. 
So undo. I'm going to use Alt again. I'm going to come in a little bit further on this carpet. And now I'm going to come out. So again, wherever you just clicked, that's where the white plus sign is going to be. And the white plus sign is what your cursor paints. So wherever that white plus sign is, again, is where your cursor is painting. So you have to be very mindful because see how I started to paint the curtain that was over here? Control Z, try it again. So right before I get to that spot, I want to stop and then let's go back a little bit. And see, it, it does take practice and it does take some knowledge of how to work with it. This is definitely not a tool that you uh, master within the first couple times that you use it. It's something that you need to to really work on. So basically what I'm doing is I'm repainting this picture. I basically moved everything over um, and painted with the picture. So that's kind of interesting, huh? Hmm. It's a fun tool to play with and again um, there are certain circumstances like again if you want the rug to come out just a little bit more or maybe you can even clone out these lines in the wall. Uh, there's a lot of different things, more branches on the plant. You can do uh, quite a few things with it. You just have to know what you want to do and then know how to implement it. And again, it takes practice. So if you're not getting it right away, if you're feeling frustrated with it, you're okay. It's exactly how I felt when I first started as well. I'm going to control Z to undo. I think we're pretty much at the beginning of the picture again. So the next tool that I would like to show you is the eraser tool, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a couple buttons underneath the clone stamp tool. It looks like a square that's half filled and half not filled. And it literally erases everything. So um, right now it's purple because my secondary color is purple over here or blue or whatever you want to call that color. Um, but it is erasing the pixels of the picture. So um, if I were to try to do a selection, I can no longer select anything where the purple area is. I can only select what's going on in this part of the picture. As we demonstrated in the selection video, perhaps I want to make a selection. I can always erase what's inside of that selection. Control D. I can also undo select the inverse and then I can erase what's on the outside of that oval if I wanted to. There's a lot of different reasons why we use erase and you're going to see that in future videos but it's just important to know how to do it. So control Z to undo, control D to deselect. All right now moving on I want to show you the text tool and that's basically where you just simply typed text onto the screen. There's two ways to do it. You can just click and it will add like some pre-made words that make no sense whatsoever. So if you want to change it, you just have to highlight those words and then type what you want to. I'm going to move that over using the move command at the very top just so that you can see what was here. Now if I want to change the color of this, I have to use the type tool and I have to highlight it. You cannot change any text without highlighting it first. And now I'm going to go up to the options bar and you can see where I can select color. So right here, and this is the color picker and I can go through and I can make any changes that I want to. So if I want it to be this color, that looks pretty cool. I can click OK. If I want to change the font, I have to highlight it and then come over here and you can look and see what all of these different fonts are going to look like. So here's this one and of course it's really big so if I want to change the size I come up here to where it's got the little size icon. It's currently at 200 points. Holy cow that's huge. Uh, let's do 48 and see where that was. Okay it's a little bit smaller but it works. So again, you have to highlight the tool 
and then the options pop up. So um, if you want to change the text, you have to first highlight it because if you try not to highlight it and do all this, it doesn't do anything to the text. You have to be super picky with Photoshop. It needs to know exactly what object it is that you're trying to manipulate. Some fonts have underline or bold. Here's bold, so it kind of made it a little bit bigger. Um, so there's a lot of fun stuff to play with right there. The last tool I want to show you is the shape tool, which is located underneath uh, the text tool, a couple of commands down. And if I click and hold my mouse, you can see that there's a little hidden panel that pops up. So I can make a rectangle, a rounded rectangle, an ellipse. And of course, with ellipse, if you hold shift, that means you can get a perfect circle. A polygon tool, so like a rhombus or a triangle. See, you didn't think that you were going to be doing math and in interior design, but you actually do do a lot of math. Um, geometry, especially. Um, so if you need to make some interesting tools or shapes like that, you can certainly use the polygon tool. The custom shape tool has a lot of different shapes that you can use instead of just um, trying to draw it with one of these shapes up above and of course line tool as well. So let's just start with the rectangle tool. You click to start the rectangle and then you drag to end the rectangle however you want it to look like. And there I have it in black because uh, that's the color that I have in the fill. So up in the option bar is the best place to change any rectangle that you have highlighted. So if I want to change the color, I come up here to fill. I click and then there's a whole lot of different colors. If there's a color here that you don't like, you can always click on the color picker and you can get much more customized in your colors that you want to. But um, Oh, and see, if you try to click off while there's a panel open, you can't. So you can just hit cancel on the panel if you don't want to choose a color that way. But I'm just going to like, let's do hot pink. Woo, buddy, I like hot pink. Now, the interesting thing with shapes is that they can have a border around them as well. So if you look up on the options bar, you see stroke and you see like a white square with like a red slash through it. That indicates that there's just no color associated with that. So I can come in here and I can choose, let's do this little light blue. It's really hard to see at first because the border size is only one pixel wide. So I can come in here and we can change that. Let's do like, there's like 10, here's 20. Like you can see all the different size borders that you can get with your shapes. Now, some people are always curious to know because the joker was here is behind this shape. How do I get that to come forward? That has to do with your layers panel and we're going to get a lot more into layers, but I want you to understand that Photoshop works on what's called layers. So remember those old transparencies that you used to have in grade school? I don't know. Some of the younger generations might not have been graced with that, but it's like clear sheets that have something written on it and then you can add a clear sheet on top of it that has something else written on it and they kind of go together but they don't. Think of everything that you draw in Photoshop is going to have its own clear sheet and so it's just a matter of order of operation. Whatever is on top of your layers panel is going to be on the top of your picture and whatever is towards the bottom of your layers panel is going to be below those objects. So as you can see right now, Joker was here is underneath the rectangle. So if I simply come over to the layers, see how my cursor changes to a hand, click and drag and you can see how you can place that rectangle underneath Joker was here. And that didn't work so let me try it one more time. Rectangle underneath. There we go. And now you can see that the text is on top of the rectangle. So again, this is an order of operations. Whatever's in the back is lower in the layers panel. Whatever is more forward and on top of your picture is higher in the ranks of your layers panel. Well, hopefully these tools 
helped you to know how to manipulate some things, how to make some changes, how to add things, how to take away things. All of these tools are going to come in handy in future videos, so it's good to explore, it's good to play, and, and get familiar with what some of these tools can do. Thank you.